Hello and welcome back once again uh, to this uh, lecture series. In uh, last few lectures, uh, we have been uh, discussing about uh, this particular topic on type penetrant testing. And so far, uh, we have learned about uh, the basic principle uh, behind uh, this technique and we have also seen uh, how the method is done and what are the different process parameters uh, which uh, control uh, this particular process. Okay? So, if you recollect, uh, finally, this is what we have for this particular technique on dye penetrant testing. So, uh, basically you have uh, six uh, different steps to follow as you could see from here uh, beginning from uh, surface preparation to all the way to inspection which is the final step. And uh, there are some steps like this as I would have told you before also uh, wherein uh, you need to exercise care, you need to do it carefully. So, as a process, if you uh, look at it, you would have realized uh, by now that uh, it is a combination of uh, primarily uh, these two things, the die and the developer. Okay? It can never be done uh, with only one of them, although uh, we have seen the die is the main uh, responsible factor which is uh, going inside the flaws and things like that, but even then only uh, with the die it is uh, not possible to uh, do this testing because uh, without the developer the, the die will uh, remain inside the flaws and will not come out. Okay? So, therefore, uh, this process is a combination of the die and the developer and these two uh, have been kept uh, with the color uh, which are uh, you know contrasting to each other so that uh, you the visibility is good. So, I will demonstrate this uh, today uh, with a small video uh, how this combination work and in that video uh, you would be also able to see the other steps. Uh, from step 1 to 6 as we have discussed so far. So, let me uh, show you this small video which will give you uh, some idea as to how exactly uh, this process is followed. So, this is a video that uh, we have uh, captured in our own lab, our NDT lab at the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. So, here let me first uh, tell you uh, what part we have that we are going to examine. So, if you see uh, this part, this is an uh, automotive uh, exhaust valve uh, which is used uh, in the engine. So, what uh, he is doing right now, uh, he is cleaning the surface as I have told you the first step of the process uh, to clean the surface nicely and as you could see, uh, he has taken a small piece of cloth and in that uh, he has taken some solvent and with the help of that uh, he has cleaned the surface. So, this is the part as you could see, this is an automotive exhaust valve. And apparently, as you could see uh, right now on the clean surface, so apparently uh, it does not really show any defect, it uh, looks like a, a sound uh, good quality part. But let us see uh, once we do this uh, dye penetrant testing on this, what can we see on this, whether it is a good part or a defective part. Okay, so, this is all uh, you need as I would have uh, told you before also. Uh, this is a very simple process, all you need are 
couple of cans, uh, one for uh, the dye that you could see uh, over here, the red colored dye. One is uh, for the developer and the one more you may have uh, uh, as a solvent uh, to uh, clean the surface. Now, this is the uh, second step to apply the penetrant. So, he is making sure that the surface is absolutely clean. And now it is ready for the dye to be applied. So, this is the spray can uh, which contains the red colored dye, uh, which is going to be now applied on this part. So, take it and apply it nicely all over the surface, nicely and uniformly. Okay, so, this is what uh, we have done. Now, if you remember, as I told you, now the surface is fully covered by the red colored dye. The dye is all over the place. Okay. And now, if there are any defect or flaws, uh, this dye is supposed to go inside them. But right now, as you see, uh, you cannot do the inspection because the whole surface is fully covered by the dye. Okay. So, this is the excess dye that we talked about, which you need to clean and make the surface clean again as it was before you could apply the developer and do the inspection. So, now what we are going to do, we are going to allow some dwell time because that is also necessary. After we apply the dye, we will allow some time, we will leave it for some time. let us say about 3 to 4 minutes for this particular part. And now, uh, we have to clean the excess dye uh, which is there on the surface. The surface should go back to the initial condition as I would have said before also. So, you can see that he is uh, taking a piece of cloth uh, which is having some solvent. So, this means uh, the method that he is using for cleaning the excess dye is, yes you guessed it right, this is the method C that he is using right now to clean the excess dye from the surface. And he is making sure that the surface is again absolutely clean, no dye or nothing is sticking to the surface. It has to go back to the initial condition as it was. Yeah, so, he is making sure he is cleaning it again and again to make sure that no extra dye is sticking to the surface. But he is careful enough so that he does not remove the dye uh, from inside the floss. Yeah, so, look at the surface now, it looks like as it was in the beginning, as if uh, there is nothing and nothing has been applied. But once the developer is applied as we are going to see now, you could uh, see a magic okay, if there are flaws.
good. The surface looks good and ready for the developer. So, he has taken the can and shaking it, the developer can. And now, he is applying that white color developer on this. And as I said, immediately you could see something is happening, some red line you can see. Okay. So, this is almost like a magic, there was nothing on the surface, it was looking absolutely clean and free of defect. And now, you see the moment he applied the developer, you could see a big long crack. Uh, from here all the way going up. Okay. So, that means uh, this part is defective, there is a big crack across this handle and here near the base also you could see over here there is a crack. Okay. Let us see if we could see any more defect. Yeah, so, this is a closer view we could see, you could see the crack uh, some indications over here also. So, that means there could be a crack in this portion as well. And there are some indications on the base here. So, this portion also was looking absolutely clean and there was nothing, but now you could see the red color dye which is which has come out and making this visible indication. Okay, so, this is how the combination works, okay. the combination of the dye and the developer works to make visible indications of surface defects. Okay. So, I hope uh, this uh, video will be a good practical exercise for all of you and now let us come back to this. Okay, so, this is what we saw and we also saw the other steps as we have discussed. And now, uh, let us go ahead and see what are the application areas of uh, dye penetrant testing. As I said before, this is a surface NDT method. And anything to do with surface and surface flaws, uh, this particular technique uh, can be applied. In fact, uh, it can be applied on all sorts of uh, surfaces, metal, non-metal, ceramic, glass, almost uh, any kind of surface, provided uh, the surface is not too porous. If the surface is uh, too porous, for obvious reasons, uh, you cannot uh, use this method. Otherwise, for every kind of uh, surface, uh, this method can be applied. And this is also easy to do and uh, quite economical as you would have seen in the previous video, all you need a couple of cans okay, to do this and this can be done anywhere. You can do it inside the lab or outside the lab or in fact, you can do it on the site also if you want to examine any part. Or a, or, a, or a component of a system. Okay. So, it provides you that flexibility and ease with which you can do it. So, let us see the common applications of this method. So, ease and flexibility are the two aspects 
which make this technique uh, very popular for inspecting surface flaws. And the other aspect is uh, of course, you can inspect all sorts of uh, surfaces. like metals, non-metals, glass, ceramics, rubber, plastic, okay. It does not matter what kind of material you have, okay. So, all these aspects uh, make this method very, very popular for uh, surface entity. These are the typical applications uh, in which uh, you can apply this method. So, any flaw which is limited to the surface like for example, fatty cracks, can be detected. Uh, fatigue is a process uh, which uh, always starts at a surface, the fatty crack initiates at a surface. So, these fatty cracks will be uh, limited on the surface and that is why this is a technique, the dye penetrant method you know can be used uh, for examining fatigue related defects or uh, fatigue cracks. Then quench cracks again during uh, quenching uh, a metal part uh, from high temperature, These cracks can develop on the surface because the surface is cooled very fast and thermal shocks due to that can develop which can lead to surface cracks. In fact, uh, even before uh, this technique was used as an NDT method, uh, these blacksmiths noted that uh, after quenching a metal part, uh, this quenchant liquid uh, is seeping out of surface cracks. Right. So, that, that is how uh, probably it was first time observed that uh, a liquid can go inside uh, surface cracks and flaws like that. Then other kind of uh, damages like uh, overload and impact fracture. Then you have uh, defects like uh, porosity. So, not only cracks, but uh, this can also be used for other, other defects for example, uh, porosity. Then in metal forming you could have uh, sub, surf, some surface defects like uh, laps and seams. The lap uh, for example, uh, uh, is a rolling defect uh, which happens uh, due to uh, a small part on the metal surface is folded uh, during rolling and that folding is being rolled along with the metal. So, it will form a small uh, folded part which is rolled over the surface. So, this is not desirable. So, this will uh, leave behind a defect on the surface. Okay. So, this kind of surface defects apart from cracks can also be inspected uh, by this particular technique. Then uh, you can also inspect welds. So, weld defects like uh, cracks, weld cracks. Then pin hole. lack of fusion, this is a very common welding defect where the uh, metal does not fuse completely uh, leaving behind a gap uh, at the root. So, this is uh, again a defect, right. So, these are uh, some of the defects, uh, there could be many more as long as uh, the defects are located on the surface.
uh, this technique can be used. And finally, uh, let us see what are the pros and cons of this particular process. Every uh, process, every method has its own uh, pros and cons, has its uh, own advantages and disadvantages. So, here also uh, let us have a look uh, what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages of this process and with that we can close this particular chapter. So, let us first have a look at the advantages. It has high sensitivity to small flaws. So, you will not miss out on smaller defects. Then it can be applied to all sorts of material as I said before also. Then if you have uh, large parts or large areas or volumes to be inspected, you can do that uh, with low cost. So, cost effectiveness is one more important aspect of this technique, it is very economical. Then uh, the other advantages as I said it is economical. Then parts uh, with complex geometry can also be inspected. So, the complexity of the part is uh, not an issue uh, for die penetrant testing. Then the indications that you have these are all direct unlike uh, some of the other NDT methods wherein you need to interpret the results you know to know whether the defect is there or not. But in this case the indications uh, are direct you see the cracks directly on the surface okay. cracks or other defects as you have seen uh, in that demo video you would be able to see the defects visually directly on the surface. So, indications of the flaws are directly produced. On the surface. And it is portable. You can take it anywhere, you can do it anywhere you want all you need as I said before also some spray cans and you are ready to go. But any process will have its own disadvantage also. So, although this process is very good to use for surface flaws, but it also may have some disadvantages. So, let us have a look at them also. So, this is limited to surface only you cannot go below the surface into the bulk. And then only materials or parts with uh, 
relatively non porous surface can only be inspected. If it is porous as I said before uh, for obvious reasons uh, you cannot do it. Pre cleaning is needed as we have seen. And the inspector who is doing the inspection must have direct access to the part. to the surface being examined. It is a surface method, so uh, surface finish and roughness can affect the results. multi process or multi step operation as we have seen. And you also need to do post cleaning. Because the surface is entirely covered by the die as well as the developer. So, if you want to uh, you know use that part, let us say the part was not defective, okay, they, you did not find any defect. So, you need to do a post cleaning. Even for the defective parts also for some other reasons you may have to clean them. You are using uh, some chemicals in terms of the dye, the solvent and uh, the solvent which is there in the developer. So, you need uh, proper uh, chemical handling. and disposal. Okay. So, these are some limitations uh, that this process has, but in spite of that uh, this is a very uh, popular technique for detecting surface flaws and it is also very economical and flexible and that is why it is very commonly used for most of the surface defects. So, this is all I have uh, for uh, this particular topic. So, we have uh, learned about the first topic that uh, we have lined up for this particular course. So, I will uh, stop here today and then in the next lecture uh, we are going to pick up uh, one more topic and then we will uh, learn, the, learn about that method uh, in more details. So, today uh, I will stop here. Thank you.